Good evening. Pierre Trudeau has made up his mind. He's decided to postpone his retirement and try instead to make one of this country's most spectacular political comebacks. Trudeau said today he's going to stay on in politics and that he'll try again to become Canada's Prime Minister. I have accepted the strong appeal of the National Liberal Caucus and the National Liberal Executive, and I will lead our party in the current election campaign. And so Trudeau was back again, entering the race despite a last-minute flurry of rumors that he had decided not to run. But he insisted he had made up his mind last night, after long consultation with colleagues. It was, he said, the single most difficult decision he'd ever made. My duty is to accept the draft of my party, and that duty was stronger even than my desire to continue with my plan to re-enter private life. And right away, Trudeau said this time his campaign will pitch a special appeal to Western Canada, where he won just three seats last May. This would be a key strategy. In my decision to lead the Liberal Party once more, I very much want Western Canadians not only to feel but to be fully involved in the continuing nation building of Canada. <clears throat> I want to form a government with good people and good representation from Western Canada. Trudeau said he'd attack the Tories as a party who not only can't run a government, but cannot operate a minority parliament. And if elected, he said he'd stay on for only a few years, time enough to undo Tory damage. Certainly, he said, this was his last election. If they love me so much that they want me forever, the answer is, I'm sorry they can't have me. But if they want me and our party for a few years, well, we're here. Trudeau's decision left most of the Liberals here and in the National Executive gasping in relief. An hour before the news conference, word was flashed by high-placed Liberals that Trudeau was out. While most Liberal MPs were insisting, no, it wasn't possible. He had to be in. Later, there was a quick move to rally behind Trudeau, as he had demanded. Well, I'm, I'm satisfied with the announcement. I think it was important to make a decision and get going and uh, get a new government. And I think Mr. Res uh, Mr. Trudeau responded to uh, an appeal on a sense of duty. Obviously, there was a certain reluctance there, and, and, but it was, uh, he's responded and responded very positively. And I think perhaps that was the, the most practical arrangement for the party at this time. And in Ontario, where the Liberals lost badly last time, there was a willingness to try again. It's a bizarre political situation. Uh, we now confront a very different situation than the one in which he resigned. We face an immediate election and not uh, the prospect of several years in opposition. It's a dramatically changed circumstance, and I don't see, well, if Muhammad Ali can come back and win the championship, I'm not sure that uh, Trudeau can't come back and do the same thing. While at least the leadership suspense ended here, there's no doubt the last four and a half days fairly rattle liberal nerves. Even members who were not in favor of Trudeau a few days ago began to panic by yesterday as they considered all the horrors of a mid-campaign leadership fight. As it is, the party will now have to scramble to get a platform together and the campaign going by early January. Brian Stewart, CBC News, Ottawa. Trudeau's return means it will be the same three leaders who will be taking the federal party through another election campaign. But that doesn't seem to bother Joe Clark or Ed Broadbent. Broadbent, opening his campaign in Toronto today, said Trudeau will only serve to make his new Democrats look better. And on a swing through southern Ontario, Prime Minister Clark was saying much the same thing about how the Conservative Party will be affected. We have two reports, beginning with Michael Vaughan on Clark. Within an hour of watching Pierre Trudeau's announcement on television, it was back to campaign business for Joe Clark. Clark told about 600 supporters he wasn't impressed with Trudeau's televised suggestion that the minority government should have consulted with the creditiste party before producing the controversial budget. Mr. Trudeau might want Mr. Fabien Roy as his Minister of Finance. I prefer John Crosby. Clark said that if he's re-elected, he will reintroduce his ill-fated budget. And he said the budget will remain exactly the same even if the Tories are returned in a minority government. And again tonight, at a meeting in Kitchener, Clark clung to his budget. Over and over, he referred to it as the budget the Liberals and the Socialists killed. He attacked opposition leader Trudeau as the man who wouldn't let the new government get on with its business. 
the Liberal Party, the party that clung to power as long as it could in May, did everything they possibly could to obstruct and to delay our action this year. And even with that, even with that, we began to get this country moving forward again. Clark drew applause from this partisan crowd by saying that when hard decisions have to be made, the country needs a majority conservative government. Clark's hopes for a majority government will have to be based on the seats right here in southern Ontario. In the last election, anti-Trudeau feeling delivered an additional 25 seats to the Conservatives from this part of the country. Today, Clark was obviously pleased to have the opportunity to run the anti-Trudeau campaign once again. Michael Vaughn, CBC News, Kitchener, Ontario. P leader Ed Broadbent opened his campaign in Toronto today. He declared that his party was happy that Pierre Trudeau had been revived as Liberal leader since his policies were responsible for the current economic crisis. Broadbent told a news conference that with Trudeau as Prime Minister, inflation more than doubled, unemployment was up by 300 percent, and foreign control of the economy continued unabated. A new leader might have been able to say that he was not responsible for past programs, for past failures. Mr. Trudeau is in no position to say it. Indeed, uh, he implied clearly the opposite a couple of weeks ago when he publicly admitted he was hardly the man to bring new ideas and imagination to the Liberal Party. So but Broadbent said his two main themes in the campaign will be the breach of faith shown by the Clark government and the disastrous consequences of the Conservative budget. Tonight, a rousing welcome in a jammed hall in East End Toronto for the kickoff speech of the campaign. Broadbent lashed out at Prime Minister Clark for what he called the betrayal of the Canadian public. Instead of getting rid of the liberal economic policies that were doing so much harm that he said he would do, he carried them one step further. Instead of listening to Canadians, as he said he would do, he became one of the most inflexible doctrinaire prime ministers in the history of our country. To avoid a repetition of 1974, the NDP's strategy is to convince voters there's no difference between the Conservatives and the Liberals. That's why Broadbent is attacking the Conservatives, accusing them of following discredited Liberal policies. He thinks the strategy will work this time because the public has had a chance to see back-to-back -back performances by Liberal and Conservative governments. Sheldon Turcott, CBC News, Toronto.